Hey everyone, Captain Leon from Captain Leon's Boating and More, and I'm here today with a real special video. You see, I love my boat. I've had this boat for eight seasons now, just about 300 hours on it. I have no interest in upgrading, but what I have had an interest in is making modifications and making this exact boat better better than it was when it left the factory. You see, that's why modifications are so important and special. When you buy a boat, it's cookie cutter, right? They're all the same. But the moment that you do just one thing, one simple thing, you could add a digital clock, you could put in a fancy stereo system, a switch on a wall, whatever you do, you have now made that boat your own. There is no other boat like it in the world. It is unique to you. And over these years, I have made numerous modifications. Many of you are familiar with them. You've seen them in multiple videos of mine, but this is the first time and I'm really excited to have one video that kind of covers every modification that I've done to this boat. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be more to come down the road as I find things that I want, but for now, this video covers it all. And if you have any questions at all or any comments at all, I welcome them. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to hear from everyone and, and be able to respond back. Uh, if you like this content, you like the content that I've produced over the years, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, you know, it's a little bump. It gives us a little help to just, you know, keep going and make these videos that can be helpful to folks and, and perhaps give you some ideas of some of the things that you want to do on your own. So uh, without any further ado, I hope you enjoy my video, modifications, must-haves, call it what you want. Enjoy. Okay, so we're going to begin right here with modifications made to the trailer itself. We're going to work our way around the trailer, uh, then we'll get up into the boat, right? So let's start with the front of the trailer. This is called the tongue, and tongue weight is imperative, right? Uh, it's so important that you have proper tongue weight. According to eTrailer.com, your tongue weight should be approximately 10% of your gross vehicle weight, right? So if you have here a 3,000 pound boat, right, you want to be looking at close to 300 pounds of tongue weight. That's the downward force uh, that this tongue is going to apply on the draw bar, right, attached to your hitch. Uh, should be 10%. When I first got this boat, it was somewhere in the area of about 5%, uh, maybe 7%. I wanted to increase the weight of the tongue on the trailer, um, or I should say of the tongue on the hitch, just to ensure I had better control and stability uh, while I'm trailering. If your tongue weight is too light, uh, you know, that can cause you a problem when you're driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour and your trailer starts to to sway. So, so how do we do that, right? How do we increase the tongue weight? Uh, actually, real simple. Uh, all I did was go ahead and loosen these bolts right here. These are the carriage bolts, but on the other side, right, we do have nuts. And went ahead and took my winch stand, right? So that's my winch stand, and I pushed it forward. I pushed it forward on the tongue uh, to bring more of the boat, right? More of the boat forward. And with the fulcrum, right, the axles are like the balance point. Uh, so once we got over here with more of the boat uh, forward on the trailer, that went ahead and increased my tongue weight, okay? And I was able to get my tongue weight to where I wanted to be, uh, you know, which was closer to 300 pounds uh, in that ballpark. Um, you know, that's where I wanted, around 275. So there are a, a lot of methods to measure your tongue weight. There are uh, some different tongue weight scales on the market today uh, that you can invest in if you are, you know, really interested in getting this just right. Uh, or with a boat that's small enough uh, like this one here, you know, I was actually able to use a traditional bathroom scale and some blocks of wood and uh, yeah, we made it work. So uh, modification, adjusting your tongue weight going to cover two modifications in one shot here real quick of course we have the stultz roller uh, many of us know that the factory rollers supplied with some of these trailers are made of a very hard plastic material that can scratch and scuff the hull the stultz is definitely softer it's a more forgiving product uh, and here i also installed a stainless steel bow shield uh, i like the look of it on the boat and also it just gives a nice point uh, for the hull to mate up with that bow roller 
All right, I actually added a spare tire to this trailer. Believe it or not, it did not come with one. And then of course I went ahead and got the spare tire cover. One of the challenges I faced is that the valve is actually right here on the rim. Uh, and in order to check the tire pressure each season, I'd have to remove this cover, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. But uh, I gotta hand it to my son, John. He uh, showed me a device. It's actually an extension uh, to the valve stem. And uh, here it is here. I just have a piece of foam protecting it as it makes its way um, you know, through the rim, but this is awesome, right? So I can just go ahead and anytime I want, check the pressure uh, on my spare tire uh, with that valve stem extension. I think I got that on Amazon. Uh, real easy, real simple, real cheap. Thanks, John. All right, your trailer tires are oh so important, right? Uh, they might not necessarily wear down with their tread, but they can with ultraviolet light and, and time. Uh, you know, deteriorate and break down. So it's really important that you keep your trailer tires in good shape. I have made the modification here of radials. I've uh, stepped that up from the bias ply. I got nice aluminum wheels I've put on this trailer and I actually rebuilt the entire hub assembly. I have videos that cover all of that work extensively if interested, uh, but yes, this is a great mod. Yeah, that's right, boat buckles. Uh, yep, another one of my videos that covered the entire install process. Just absolutely love these things. Crank them up, makes the cable or strap nice and tight, hit a button and you're good to go. Uh, awesome, really recommend these. Okay, this trailer came with traditional incandescent lights. I have replaced every light on this trailer to be an LED. Uh, they're great, they're super bright at night. I'm not replacing bulbs. Uh, it was really one of the best enhancement I made to this trailer. And uh, this pretty much concludes with this modification, everything that I've done on the entirety of the trailer. Now we'll step it up and take a look at the boat. All right, now we are done with the trailer. We're gonna make our way to the boat itself. And we're gonna start right here with our bow light. The bow light that came included on the boat, uh, was a plastic kind of cheap bow light with traditional incandescent bulbs in it. I went ahead and replaced this with a three nautical mile range bow light. Uh, it's actually great. It's got obviously red on one side, green on another, and there's two indicator lights at the top. So you don't have to lean all the way over. They'll light up uh, when this is lit to let you know it's working. A real great addition, very happy with it. as we make our way further along the outside of the boat we come across the stainless steel horn uh, again this was a modification only because Yamaha had chose to put this white cheap plastic horn on here I wanted to upgrade it uh, to make this particular model look like the uh, next model up make it a little fancier essentially the same horn internally works the same way uh, it just looks a little bit nicer <laughs> All right, now on to one of my favorite enhancements, the Taylor stainless steel fender lock, right? This is so easy. You just find the ideal place along the side of the hull. Uh, it goes ahead, it's got a little keyway here. So all you do is drop it in, it swings down, it's locked, it can't come out. Uh, I have my fenders marked, bow and stern. This could not be easier. When you are coming into the dock and you have folks on board the boat that might not be that familiar, you have a first mate who's helpful, but you know you just gotta make things easier for them. Perhaps it's your spouse or other. These are great. They just know where it goes. They just drop it in. There's no guesswork and you are good to go. And by having this prepared, you will know the exact length that you need. You could preset that. You know where the fender needs to go. We know that, uh, you know, as the boat uh, has its certain curvature to it, there's different heights that these fenders need to be to have them line up exactly where you want them to be, uh, you know, along the dock. And, and with that being said, you know, when you're getting ready to place these things, right? And I'll just show you here, uh, you know, this was the location for my stern one. Now, of course, this is my bow fender, but for demonstrative purposes, this will suffice. Uh, so you can see where this locks in here. You know, and the way you want to do this is you just want to you just want to get the boat along the dock, uh, and you want to take a look at where the ideal location for the fenders are and what the appropriate height would be 
you know, uh, for each one. You know, these boats have curvature, so where the bow curves around the front, uh, it's not ideal, you know, to put a fender up here because the fender is actually not making contact with the dock at this point. It has to be further back there. So a uh, real great addition made by Taylor. There are different companies who make them. My only recommendation is definitely stick with stainless steel. Uh, no question about it. You want to stick with stainless steel. These things have been on this boat for eight years and look at the condition they're in. Absolutely perfect work flawlessly highly recommend them okay our modification tour is now making it around toward the stern of the boat and here uh, a real tremendous enhancement that i made is replacing the cheap plastic yamaha cup holders with combination cup and rod holders i am a fisherman it's important for me to have a place to put my fishing rod uh you know mate series is the company that produces this product they make it in both a plastic and a stainless steel. They make it in a 15 degree, a 30 degree, or a straight. You know, you gotta decide what you want. I went with 15 degree and stainless steel. These things are not cheap. Uh, I believe they're about $100 each one, and uh, I wouldn't be without them. Uh, I have them in the boat. We'll get to that when we get inside the boat. Uh, those are plastic and far less expensive, but out here uh, where it's exposed to, to more salt water, uh, we went ahead with stainless steel. So let me just show you how this works uh you know this is essentials to boating you have to have a place for your beer uh there's no question or other drink truly call it what you want uh and it definitely does a great job with that and now when it's time to head out and get yourself some dinner um you know we go ahead and put the fishing rods right in and like i said this one is a 15 degree so my rod is on a 15 degree angle uh you know you can get what you want but these are just absolutely tremendous. Uh, you know, I have one on either side here, the swim deck, uh, really a great, great enhancement. All right, and back here at the swim deck, you can see that I have added a uh, actual tape on ruler. Again, I'm a fisherman, so it's important for me to have a place to measure my fish. Uh, here's usually where I bring fish uh, on board the boat, right on the swim deck, and uh, makes it super easy to measure them at this location. And here under the swim deck is where we mounted our Lowrance transducer, uh, which gives us side scan. Uh, this really works great. Gives us the images we're looking for of the bottom. Again, uh, probably more important if you're into fishing, uh, but on the other hand, it does provide us water temperature. And uh, well, you'll see the unit inside when we get inside the boat. It's a real tremendous chart plotter uh, and gives us some other information about tides and so forth. So uh, this was added on. You know, again, watch any of the videos that I have linked here if you wanna see, you know, how these particular devices were installed. Yeah, probably one of the more common modification many of us make, right? The jet boat pilot thrust vectors, which help in uh, steering at low speed, uh, really gives you a little bit better control when we talk about the boat tracking uh, when you're in a no-wake mode. And then of course, when you're up on plane, uh, the fins rise out of the water, so they're not creating any drag or affect your steering in any way. Uh, Complementing the thrust vectors, of course, is the lateral thruster. That's this device right here that gives additional lateral thrust uh, blowing out to the port or starboard side. And of course, that will go ahead and help you when you're in reverse as far as having even more control uh, as you're backing up the boat. Uh, of course, there are videos that you can watch, including my own, on my review of the lateral thruster. All right, that's pretty much it for the outside of the boat. The only thing I didn't cover was the hull hugger. Wait, 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 wait. You don't know what the hull hugger is? <laughs> watch the commercial. Has this ever happened to you? You pull up to a bulkhead to find that your fenders are absolutely useless. They're swinging free like grandma's teats or your boys in a pair of boxes. But wait, there's now a solution. Hull hugger. That's right, hull hugger. Hull hugger is made of a patented space age material that cannot be replicated. Simply remove the hull hugger from its storage location. Unfold, attach one end of the hull hugger line to a cleat, and stretch out the hull hugger along the hull of your boat. Fasten to the rear 
and you are done. It's that simple and that easy. Adjust the hull hugger as needed, and now your hull is protected and safe, so you can enjoy your fun and good times with family. Hull Hugger, from the makers of Pump Plug. Okay, welcome back, and now let's make our way inside this 2014 boat, which is in pretty good condition, being it's eight seasons old and has 300 hours on the engine. All right, we are in the bow of the boat and I just wanted to take a moment uh, for the sake of correction. I believe earlier I mentioned that the bow light I had added onto the boat was three nautical mile. I am sorry, according to the United States Coast Guard, it's a two nautical mile light. Uh, that might be the best you can get. But believe me when I tell you at night, uh, when this thing's lit up, I got, you know, uh, bright colored lights uh, reflecting on either side of the fence here. Uh, it's pretty darn bright. Next modification here are these Clarion six and a half inch coaxial speakers. Uh, I know many of you guys are really into your audio. I know you have amplifiers, you have subwoofers. I do not. Uh, this boat has a high powered head and four, right? So it's a head unit and four speakers. Um, I'm not quite sure of what the wattage is of the, uh, the receiver itself, the head unit. But let me tell you, with these four six inch Clarion coaxial speakers, this stereo system does okay. There is a lot of bass in this boat, at least for my standards. Generally, I like it a little bit quieter out on the water, but that's just me. But let me tell you, the stereo system sounds great. Not terribly much going on for you here in the bow, but I just want you to take note that, you know, I have an anchor in here and I have this rubber pad, right? You can get this, it's like a, like a welcome mat. But this thick rubber pad, this is good stuff because, you know, here is just carpeting and it's your fiberglass hull underneath there. And if you have anything heavy in any compartment that's banging around or slamming, if you hit some wakes, you know, it'd be a good idea that you have some extra protection. Pick yourself up some of these rubber pads. All right, as you make your way through the walkthrough section here. This door came from Yamaha from the factory. And on this side, we just had a solid fiberglass wall. I went ahead and cut this open. And now, now we have a brand new door with garbage pail. We also have more storage and of course, tremendous access to the back of our helm area for our wiring. This is certainly a, an excellent addition to do uh, for me. Uh, again, check out the video if you're interested in that project. All right, as we make our way into the helm area on the port side, one of the first things we notice is a XM satellite antenna. Uh, this is just tremendous. You know, we're out here on the water. Of course, we have our pre-recorded music, AM, FM, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, to have the uh, flexibility to pick up pretty much whatever we want to listen to out here, listen to a commercial free, uh, it's just great. We love it. One of the best things I did when we talk about music here on the boat. Hey, this is a great thing to have on board. You never know. Hey, you know what time it is? You know what time it is? Time to move on to our next mod. Okay, so as promised, here is the combination cup and rod holder that I installed. These are much cheaper. These are only like, I think they're like 20 bucks or something, but uh, rod fits in. I also did these with a 15 degree angle as well. Uh, so they look kind of sporty, you know, as I'm moving along with my rod. And uh, hey, what's this? Looks like a tidal tail blackfish jig. Anyway, uh, that, that's great um, because I could have a total of four uh, rods here at the same time. I actually trolled and uh, picked up some nice bluefish and striped bass uh, trolling with a rod right here. Uh, so yeah, it's good stuff. All right, not a lot going on in the engine compartment as far as modifications go. Many of you know from my prior videos, I'm a bit of a purist. I really haven't made any severe modifications to the engine. Uh, I do have a K&N air filter in here I put in not too long ago. Uh, and uh, the only other thing I just wanna bring to your attention is you just gotta look around your engine because sometimes you could run into some problem spots from the factory that, that needs work, you know? So here, you know, you could see the scupper line and you can see that I have a little piece of um, right over here there's a little felt piece where the two rub each other right so we have a rubber hose here that's our water exhaust running out uh, and then we have the scupper uh, you know the self-draining 
cockpit hose rubbing against it. And right in that corner in there, right in there, there was actually a rub mark appearing on the rubber. So that little piece of felt there does a great job just protecting the two. Things like that, you know, you just gotta keep an eye out for. Not everything from the factory is always perfect, uh, but I do wanna show you, you know, uh, you know, the primary enhancement I made in here, which is of course the high water bilge alarm, right? Okay, so there it is. Uh, right down there, the high water bilge alarm. And uh, let me show you some photos here of exactly what this is and how this works. Uh, essentially, what you got is a device that should the water rise in the engine compartment or in the bilge area, it gets high enough that this float uh, you know, goes up. Uh, what's gonna happen is it triggers an alarm and uh, we're off to the races. So, um, you know, I like having this device. I like knowing, uh, you know, having the peace of mind that should there ever be a situation where I'm taking on water and my bilge pump is running and pumping out water, but I'm underway, so I don't know, right? Uh, here, I'll have a siren go off at the helm area to alert me uh, of the problem. All right, so here we are in the helm area, and this is my West Marine dock pole, right? Uh, this is a telescopic, a telescoping, I don't know, call it what you want, pole, uh, extends out with the sections to at least like 10 feet. You can grab ropes, you can grab the dock, you can grab something floating in the water. But what I've installed are brackets right here, and you can see where this is. This is right alongside the, the captain's chair, right? Uh, and it's great. Anytime you need it, I just reach down and grab it. Uh, great safety tool to have handy. All right, so as we make our way around, let me just show you the Lowrance Elite uh, TI-7. This is a seven inch screen. Uh, this gives me a whole host of features. It does a lot of different things. Uh, of course, it's my chart plotter and it's got sonar and side scan and a bunch of information, and trip meters, so on and so forth. You know, I could hit information uh, and it brings us to, uh, you know, a whole host of stuff here that you want to check out. Uh, you know, pretty cool. Um, you know, I can go in and and hit this and I could hit information here. Trip one, you know, we could see that, uh, you know, uh, our maximum speed was 45.3 miles per hour. That's GPS clock speed on this naturally aspirated, uh, you know, 1.8 liter engine. So uh, yeah, this does a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, really great, um, you know, as far as a useful tool, whether it be uh, charting a course, whether it be looking for fish, whether it be checking the depth and structure at the bottom, uh, whatever you need, you know, it's, uh, it's good stuff. And here I have a little tiny mirror. It's actually more of a gag than anything else. It's really an automotive mirror. Uh, somebody gave me, uh, and uh, it still does a good job. I mean, if you just want to look quickly, see what's going on uh, as far as your passengers, not really intended for skiing or wakeboarding, but we don't do too much of that, so we're fine. Uh, while we're here also, we have our wireless charging cell phone unit. Uh, this is spring-loaded. It accommodates any size cell phone. Uh, it is wireless charging. You can loosen the knob here if you want to turn it uh, from, uh, I guess it would be a uh, portrait to landscape. Uh, I really like this device. It works great. Um, you know, the only thing I could say about it negative is that, you know, like any electronic device, if you leave it in the sun, they start to get hot and overheat. Uh, so it's not always the ideal place, you know, for your cell phone at all times, but uh, real great right and you're just gonna charge your phone while you're underway all right moving over to the stereo system I can't say enough good things about this Clarion remote control right uh, this is incredible it's waterproof uh, they say it floats I haven't tried it but uh, you know I'm able to just do anything I want to do on the stereo system here uh, go to another XM station raise the volume mute it etc etc I can do it when I'm you know uh, out uh, at the beach just a few feet behind the boat um, so uh, real good stuff uh, again not an audio file here but for me and my purposes you know with the four speakers on this boat uh, it does a real good job And here's a nice little carpeted storage compartment that I mounted up under the helm area here. Uh, that works really well. You know, I could put my wallet, keys, things. Uh, you know, it seems like Yamaha probably should have put something under there, uh, but I did that. Uh, and, and I did that and I did a couple other mods and it's all in the one video if you want to watch it, um, you know, 
But now let me get to one of my favorites here, and that is my brand new steering wheel. A uh, bit of a joke because uh, in the video uh, that covers the installation of this new steering wheel, uh, many of you will get a laugh, uh, and many of you may opt not to replace your wheel when you see what I had to go through. All right, we're coming to the end of our tour of must-have modifications, right? And uh, we're with uh, my stern pole here, right? This is uh, our stern uh, light pole, uh, also known as uh, you know our anchor light. Uh, of course, this light needs to be on anytime you're on the water at night, uh, whether you're underway or you're anchored. Uh, and the brighter it is, probably the better. The bulb that came is, uh, you know, with this stock was just one of those traditional incandescent bulbs, uh, and I could see the vibration of boating that filament going after a while. So I went ahead and just replaced it uh, with an LED bulb. Uh, this thing uh, is bright, boy. Uh, plug it in, it takes the place of a regular light bulb, and when you plug it in at night, it just, uh, well, you can see the difference. And I'm also hoping it'll last a little bit longer, uh, you know, with the vibrations on the water. So, uh, modification, anchor light. Hmm, let me think. What could I possibly add to my boat now? I mean, I've practically done it all. Wait a second, wait a minute. What if I get rid of the carpet and I put down that sea deck? Yeah, that's an idea. Hey, I'm going to go check out that awesome video just released by Boating Propolis on the installation of sea deck. That guy makes it look easy. Well, who knows what the future holds, but if you have any suggestions, send them my way. Just want to wish everybody well. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Take care, Yama peeps. Captain Leon signing off.